Tragic Final Years of Claudette Colbert, Childless and Sick. Claudette Colbert was a French-born American stage and film actress, one of the most charming and vivacious stars of Hollywood's golden age. Claudette Colbert specialized in witty, sexy and elegant roles in romantic comedies and she was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Actress for three films. It Happened One Night, 1935, for which she won the Oscar, Private Worlds, 1936, and Since You Went Away, 1945. She is the only actress to date to appear in three films, each of which was nominated for the Best Picture Oscar in the same year. It happened in 1934 and the three nominated movies were Cleopatra, Imitation of Life and, the winner of the Best Picture Award, It Happened One Night. During her career Claudette appeared in over 60 films, many as leading lady. She is ranked at number 12 in the American Film Institute's list of greatest actresses. She was one of the first top Hollywood stars to embrace the new medium of television and she also returned to Broadway later in her career. She was born Emily Claudette Chauchouin on September 13, 1903, in saint Mond, Seine, France but was raised in New York City after her family immigrated to the United States when she was very young. The family's native tongue was French although all spoke fluent English due to a strong family connection to the British Channel Islands. She studied at Washington Irving High School where one of her teachers was Alice Rostitter, who was a playwright and actress with the Provincetown Playhouse in Greenwich Village. Alice encouraged Claudette to perform in one of her plays, The Widow's Veil in 1919 and planted the idea of her becoming a professional actress. Claudette had, at the time, set her sights on becoming a commercial artist or fashion designer and she began part-time work in a dress shop whilst studying at the Art Students League of New York. Nevertheless the theater drew her back and after a chance meeting at a party with the playwright Anne Morrison, Claudette appeared on the Broadway stage for the first time in a supporting role in 1923 in Morrison's play, The Wild Westcots. With a professional acting career in prospect, she decided to change her surname and chose the maiden name of her maternal grandmother, Colbert. She embarked on a full-time stage career in 1925, and the following year had her first big critical Broadway success in The Barker, in which she played a snake charmer. In 1927 she made her first film at Long Island's Astoria Studio, For the Love of Mike but it was unsuccessful and she went back to Broadway returning to films at the start of the sound revolution in The Hole in the Wall in 1929. Taki suited Claudette as audiences responded to her cultured, well-modulated, voice as well as to her beauty, and with the Depression closing theaters all over America, she decided to forsake the stage for Hollywood. In the pre-Hayes Code era, Stardom arrived for Claudette in racy women's pictures such as The Lady Lies in 1929 where she plays a shopgirl who falls for an older man, and Honor Among Lovers in 1931 as a secretary in love with her boss. The Colbert of these years, with black, sometimes bobbed, hair and vampish makeup, is much overtly sexier than in her later star vehicles. This is especially the case in her work for director Cecil B. DeMille. As Empress Papia she bathes nude in ass's milk in the sign of the cross in 1932. She wears some very fetishistic costumes as the Egyptian siren in Cleopatra in 1934. And in the jungle adventure comedy, Four Frightened People in the same year, she plays a liberated teacher who seems to lose another layer of clothing with each scene. After 1934, Hollywood softened her image, permed and lightened her hair and cast her as the ideal wife and hostess, the type of woman who can arrange Ava's flowers and knows all the occasions where it is appropriate to send a gift or Ava's flowers bouquet. Her talent for comedy was well exploited by the likes of Preston Sturgis, Ernst Lubitsch, and Sam Wood, and she consistently drew audiences into movie theaters. But her finest performance remains her best known. The spoiled heiress Ellie Andrews on the run in Frank Capra's joyous comedy It Happened One Night in 1934, in which she famously stops traffic by adjusting her stockings at the roadside, and for which she won an Oscar for Best Actress.
The film was the first to sweep all five major Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Director and Best Actor, and was a major box office success. Claudette felt so sure she would lose the Best Actress Award to Betty Davis that she didn't even attend the ceremony. She was now a major Hollywood star. In 1935 she received a second Academy Award nomination for her performance in the hospital drama, Private Worlds and the following year she signed an advantageous new contract with Paramount Pictures, which made her Hollywood's highest paid actress. Claudette spent the next decade alternating between comedy and drama, frequently in the company of her most popular co-star, Fred McMurray. She gained a reputation of giving extremely energetic and wholehearted acting performances, which compensated for her occasional imperviousness and her insistence that only one side of her face be photographed, which frequently necessitated redesigning movie sets just to accommodate her phobia about her bad side. Her name ensured that films such as The Gilded Lily in 1935, Drums Along the Mohawk in 1939 kept paying customers coming through the turnstiles, and her career continued successfully into the 1940s in films such as Boomtown in 1940, with Clark Gable, Spencer Tracy, and Hedy Lamarr. Arise, My Love in the Same Year, with Ray Milland, and the Preston Sturgis comedy The Palm Beach Story in 1942 opposite Joel McRae. In 1944 she starred in Since You Went Away and picked up her third nomination for Best Actress. Colbert remained at the top until her last big hit, The Egg and I in 1947, after which her career gradually declined in terms of roles and script quality and as her drawing power faded. She set her sights on the role of Margot Channing in All About Eve, but injury forced her to relinquish the part to Betty Davis. Although her film career was waning, Claudetta began to work successfully on television and in the theater with occasional film work such as Three Came Home in 1950, Let's Make It Legal in 1951, and The Western Texas Lady in 1955. Her theatrical work included performances in America and England such as in the popular farce, The Marriage Go Round in 1958 opposite Charles Boyer. The Irregular Verb to Love in 1963, The Kingfisher in 1978 with Rex Harrison and Errant We All, in 1985, also with Rex Harrison. She also made a very successful appearance in the television miniseries The Two Mrs. Grenvilles in 1987 for which she won a Golden Globe and received a nomination for an Emmy Award. In 1989 she was presented with a Life Achievement Award from the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. In her personal life, Claudette was married twice, firstly in 1928 to Norman Foster, an actor and director, who had appeared with her in The Barker, but they never lived together due to her mother's dislike of Foster. They eventually divorced in 1935 when Claudette married Dr. Joel Pressman, a surgeon. The marriage was childless and lasted until Pressman's death in 1968. Claudette maintained a lifelong interest in painting, fashion design, and commercial art and retired finally to Spitestown, Barbados where she spent her final years with her friend and companion Helen O'Hagan who looked after her after Claudette suffered a series of strokes. Claudette Colbert passed away in Barbados on July 30, 1996, at the age 92. After cremation and a requiem mass in New York, her ashes were flown back to Barbados and buried at the Godings Bay Church Cemetery in Spitestown. Rest in peace Claudette Colbert. Goodbye legendary actress.